So we're, we're currently closing the first acquisition that's already been announced. Uh, should close it later this month in October. We are, we're lucky enough to not have to raise additional capital to close the transaction. So the way we structured it uh, is very favorable for investors, our current and future investors, because uh, it, again, uh, minimizes dilution. Uh, a lot of stage payments based on major milestones like feasibility studies and EIAs and commercial production. And those are kind of like four, five, six years out. Uh, so the, the initial capital uh, we need is only a few million dollars to advance the social, some of the technical work, like I said, and, 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 and some of that permitting work, the repermitting work we want to do on, on that asset. Um, so what we what we see happening next three to six months is lock up asset number two or two and three. Um, and so we, we obviously want a, a gold development project, very similar to what we did in Mongolia, something that we can put our own feasibility study, our own take on that won't need a lot of work uh, to get to a phase one, whatever a phase one will look like. If it's a 50 to 70,000 ounce production profile, uh, focus on advancing that final permitting, a feasibility study, and hopefully get to an FID on that kind of project within a year of acquisition. So we're really working hard to lock up our, our second and maybe third asset. And as soon as we do, um, you know, we'll make the decisions of, of going public. We have, a, we have our own shell that's already listed, ready to go on the TSX venture. So Excellent. when we see the window, we'll go public and, and obviously raise capital. And the goal is we like to raise capital at different stages so that there's a value creation every time you raise equity, you'll be at a higher level. So the ideal situation is, is to raise money, uh, locking up asset number two or lock up asset number two and three and go public at the same time and raise all the capital then, uh, where a lot of investors don't like to be held to, uh, in, in privates for too long. Uh, but there's a, there's a clear path to go public. Uh, and so there'll be opportunities for investors to participate privately and then publicly in the next three to six months. And I think, you know, six months is probably the, the timing of when we're going public, uh, if we're successful in locking up those assets uh, this year. And that's, that's what we're working towards. And Neil, what's going on? How are you, man? I'm good, Andy. Uh, how are you? I'm doing well. Exciting times for Olympic precious metals here. Um, I want, let's give me the 30,000 foot view here. This is your second project that you're uh, rolling into. Exciting times. Give me the 30,000 foot view of Olympic medals here. Olympic precious sure. metals. Sure, Olympic Precious Metals is looking to become a multi-asset, multi-jurisdiction, and now even multi-commodity um, uh, developer and producer. Uh, currently, we're a private company closing our first copper acquisition. So our plan is that even though we're called a Precious Metals company, we like diversification within the vehicle to have both copper and precious metals, so gold and silver ideally. But gold, we've just come off building uh, a gold producer. Uh, Where was Steph that at? So that's Step Gold, uh, listed on the main board of the TSX, STGO, and that's a company that myself and Matt Wood, who are the two of the three founders of Olympic Precious Metals, are were co-founders of Step Gold as well. And we took a uh, an asset that was, uh, you know, discovered by Centera Gold, thirty million US spent on it, uh, acquired it, uh, increased the reserves over the first couple of years, you know, up from two hundred thousand ounces to about one point seven million, one point eight million ounces of reserves, put the oxide mine to production. Uh, it, over a 14-month period between 2018 and 2019, we constructed it, uh, brought it online in April 2020, and it was a producer and a cash flow generator right out of the gate. And today, Steph Gold, through an acquisition uh, that closed uh, over the summer, uh, is producing you know, 70 to 80,000 ounces a year. That'll jump up to over uh, close to 150,000 ounces by 2026 with, when the expansion of the sulfide operation comes online that is now fully funded. So we raised $150 million of debt last year to expand. So you have a, a, co a company that's up and running, Mongolia focused, 99.8% Mongolian staff of over a thousand people today. Uh, any future M&A will be in countries and we have all the local relationships and, and team members. So, you know, really myself and Matt's workers done there and building that vehicle. We're still large supportive shareholders. Um, in fact, you know, our board and management team owned about 20% of Steph Gold, uh, never sold a share. Uh, over six years of being public, and that still exists today. I'm still the hard work is done, so I want to reap the rewards when yeah. as the market recovers. And so we want to replicate the same thing with Olympic precious metals, but in different jurisdictions. So we're not competing with Step X Mongolia. America's focus a little bit easier to understand with investors. Yeah, so obviously closer closer to home uh, to me uh, where I reside in, in Toronto. Um, yeah. So you know, being in America, it makes it a little bit easier. But there's still a lot of opportunity of finding non core assets to to really focus on, uh, de risk, develop, yeah. and eventually 
build one mine that will will generate cash flow to explore and develop the next pipeline of of assets that we we are acquiring. Uh, yeah, in the let me take. Let me take a little bit of a step back, and this yeah. pertains to the new project. Uh, actually, you already answered one question. You're still a shareholder of Step Gold. You have not sold. That's right. Correct. That's excellent. Yeah. Okay. So, the next question that I have for you: Mongolia at times can be a very challenging to jurisdictions. What were the challenges? Some of the challenges that you uh, learned from uh, building building Step Gold in Mongolia. Yeah, listen, um, one is, you know, to be a successful miner in any jurisdiction is you need to be local. And we were local from day one, right? We are our, our chairman and CEO, Bata, is uh, local. We were we spent a lot of time with the local population telling them who we are, how we plan to build a local company and how locally they will benefit directly and indirectly through jobs, scholarships, education, upskilling. So there really wasn't a major issue uh, in execution and building the mine. Uh, but, you know, what we learn is, you know, there's a lot of reasons why you could be stranded on your asset that have nothing to do with the country. So uh, the pandemic, supply chain issues, uh, wars, you know, mm -hmm. Mongolia is stuck between Russia and China. And, and you know, there's, there's a lot of other things that impacted us in the last couple of years. So that's why I've learned that diversification is key so that if you are stuck on, on your asset for a reason that's out of your control, you still have other assets you can continue to de-risk and work on. And that's why Olympic, you know, we're not using the logo, but having multiple rings uh, creates that diversification and scale. You can still build a scalable company that investors will react to, want to invest in, could eventually go in an index, not, but it doesn't have to be all your eggs in one asset, one mine, one country. So, you know, that was certainly a learning experience, but uh, you have the support of government. It's pro-mining, pro-foreign investment. Um, the biggest... I would say hurdle was uh, introducing Mongolia to investors. A lot of investors didn't care to know about Mongolia, had uh, misconceptions of, about the country. Some people thought it was part of China with inner Mongolia to, you know, horror stories that have, you know, 20 from 20 years ago that, you know, exist in any, any new emerging mining jurisdiction, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so I think we had to, we had a lot of perception issues we had to deal with when we were educating investors. So it wasn't easy to raise capital. From Mongolia, we did right. We raised twenty five million IPO, ten million of equity uh, pre IPO. Uh, we brought in a stream with Triple Flag, a very solid partner uh, for equity and, and stream, and we built our mind. So through execution, we 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 put a lot of these things to bed uh, very quickly, uh, and it shows that you can have that local content. They can operate these businesses successfully, and you can continue to grow. And that's what we've, we've now established. You know, uh, valuation is valuation. You can't control the market, as I'm sure everyone knows how bad it's been for juniors. Uh, but certainly cash flow is king and ca having cash flow means you don't have to worry about dilution. You're, and if you own a lot of your company, which we did, we were always mindful of dilution. We, we, you know, we, we care about the equity upside, not a, not a salary, I guess, if you look at that way, that's, that's how we are rewarded. And, and now that our hard work's done, uh, we will be our, ourselves and investors will be rewarded over time. And, you know, whether it's a buyback of shares, paying a dividend, um, you know, and hopefully market, uh, further market, uh, uptick on that stock i think uh it's definitely a success in in, in many ways but we've certainly learned um from that and so that's where in america it becomes a lot easier to present to investors most people will know a peru a brazil uh a canada a nevada you know wherever we we land our our next few assets uh will be well-known jurisdictions that will probably be easier to fund yeah excellent well it, that's music to my ears uh to be candid with you um, but let's move forward to Olympic. Uh, you have a uh, a property, if you would, a project, a yep. copper project in Peru. And now yep. where else are you looking to before you IPO? Uh, at the moment, obviously, you know, I can just give you broad strokes there, but certainly we are looking at some other assets in Peru. We're looking in Brazil. Our team has experience in Brazil as well, uh, building copper companies and, and selling them for close to half a billion uh, so we have experience globally, but certainly those are areas we like, we we understand. Uh, so my partners, you know, being in Brazil since 2002 and, and, and had numerous discoveries and of course built, you know, a copper producer called Evanco. So uh, we're already in Peru. We're happy to look at a couple more assets in Peru, but again, we want the diversification. So we are looking at stuff in Brazil. We're looking at stuff in Canada and there's not too much, obviously, that, uh, that that's advanced in terms of permitting or assets, but there are a couple opportunities there that we are trying to advance. And uh, it would be nice to offset again Peru by having a tier one like Canada in the mix, uh, or 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 one of the better states in the U.S. Uh, in the mix, if we if we can find that. And really, we are looking at advanced assets where 
capital has been spent. It's a non-core asset for a major company that you know is focusing on on larger projects. All these mid majors and mid tiers are getting bigger and bigger. So you know it's very easy for a hundred thousand ounce production profile to be non-core. We're happy to focus on fifty to one hundred twenty-five thousand ounces of gold uh, equipment production and and at, and have a few producing mines. Same on the copper, ten to twenty thousand ounces. Uh, um, 20, 10 to 20,000 tons per annum production that generates a lot of cash flows we're happy with. We don't need these 50,000 50, ton uh, plus projects, uh, but longer life, money spent, we can now refocus on it as a new team and and, and create the value there. So that's that's what we're looking for. We've landed, it's been announced, we're buying an asset from Nexa, which is a, you know, a billion dollar plus company listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, they're, again, they've been focusing on, they're, they're, they're one of the biggest zinc producers globally. So they have a, a established zinc business uh, in Peru and in Brazil. Uh, and they've been looking at, uh, you know, exiting some of their non-core uh, assets where we can now focus on them. So that's 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 what we're looking generally. And so I think you'll see better tier jurisdictions in the Americas between Peru is already still one of the biggest copper and gold producers. Right. Uh, it's gotten a lot better in the last couple of years. Uh, Brazil, you can do things, you know, look at the success of G mining and how they built their, the first mine there in, in fairly, fairly quick time, uh, and advance that, um, you know, fairly significantly. And now it's in commercial production. So, you know, you can do things in short order there. Um, but, but we're not going to overpay for assets to get in the game. So we've been very conservative in looking at opportunities and with the goal where we can is, you know, issue paper to the vendors. And we'll create the upside for them that way so that the capital we raise goes into the projects to complete a feasibility study if there's not one, to finish the permitting if it's not you know, real stuff that can really de-risk the asset. You know, buy something for for under fifty dollars an ounce in the ground and, and make it worth a hundred or two hundred from de risking or, or de risking or putting it into production as we did. Right, right. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the structure of the company here. Um, who all's involved? It's yourself, uh, a partner, I'm sorry. And um, yeah. Um, yeah, is it just family members or just former board members from uh, STEP? Or tell me about that. No, so we actually built a, pre a pretty a pretty rock star team, I would say, of, of a group of individuals that have done it before in the past. So obviously myself and Matt Wood, who's the executive chairman of Olympic Christian Matt Metals. Wood. He's, uh, he's um, you know, exploration geologist, has built numerous companies, as I mentioned, you know, not in, in you know, previously also in Mongolia, he built a coal company and sold that for half a billion cash in 2011. Built a copper company in in Brazil, out the Vanco, sold the Oz Minerals, which is now part of BHP. Uh, he's got he's got he's the technical guy and the mining entrepreneur that I joined forces with as the capital markets guy in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, and so us two are the same from the Step Gold side, and then we've added um, a few advisory board members and board members uh, that have all either been fund managers or currently are in that space. Our technical have built mines and operated mines globally um, uh, or have some uh, sell side experience as well. You know, so the well-rounded to bring us assets to help us raise capital or to help us do due, due diligence. So we've, we've, we've built a, a, a really good team to help us review these things and, and move advance them forward. Of course, as we grow, become public, then, you know, we'll add, you know, a CFO and, and, and a few other, you know, uh, members of the team. We have Rajan Rai in Vancouver, who's, you know, a uh, former broker and, and on the capital market side. So, you know, he's West Coast, I'm East Coast to cover the, the all the capital market side of retail investors to institutional investors. So we have a good reach there. Um, and uh, we so we have a team ready to go and, 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 and have been looking at assets. So and then we added Luis uh, Coizeta, who's a Peruvian national as our president. We've got a Peruvian asset. He knows the asset well. He's got a team already on the ground to, to help advance technical and social. That's the first thing we're going to be doing down there. And that's something that we would have to build ourselves just like we did in Mongolia and we were able to actually kind of roll it into our team. So now, you know, we had the boots on the ground in Peru to, to advance someone who's got very strong relationships in the mining space for the last uh, decades, you know, the last 20, 30 years. So he's, he's our boots on the ground, the local content, local relationships, you know, it actually fast track what we were going to do if we did this by ourselves. Yeah. It sounds uh, pretty turnkey so far. Yeah. If yeah. you would. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this is what are you looking to accomplish in the next three to six months and what's your ETA um, when you're going to go public? Yeah, sure. So we're, we're currently closing the first acquisition that's already been announced. Uh, it should close it later this month in October. We are, we're lucky enough to not have to raise additional capital to close the transaction. So the way we structured it uh, is very favorable for investors, our current and future investors, because uh, it, again, uh, minimizes dilution. 
Uh, a lot of stage payments based on major milestones like feasibility studies and EIAs and commercial production. And those are kind of like four, five, six years out. Uh, so the, the initial capital uh, we need is only a few million dollars to advance the social, some of the technical work, like I said, and, 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 and some of that permitting work, the repermitting work we want to do on, on that asset. Um, so what we, what we see happening next three, six months is lock up asset number two or two and three. Um, and so we, we obviously want a, a gold development project, very similar to what we did in Mongolia, something that we can put our own feasibility study, our own take on that won't need a lot of work, uh, to get to a phase one, whatever a phase one will look like. If it's a 50 to 70,000 ounce production profile, uh, focus on advancing that final permitting, a feasibility study, and hopefully get to an FID on that kind of project within a year of acquisition. So we're really working hard to lock up our, our second and maybe third asset. And as soon as we do. Um, you know, we'll make the decisions of, of going public. We have our, we have our own shell that's already listed, ready to go on the TSX venture. So Excellent. When we see the window. We'll go public and, and obviously raise capital. And the goal is we like to raise capital at different stages so that there's a value creation every time you raise equity, you'll be at a higher level. So the ideal situation is is to raise money, uh, locking up asset number two, or lock up asset number two and three, and go public at the same time and raise all the capital then, uh, where a lot of investors don't like to be held to uh, in, in privates for too long. Uh, but there's a, there's a clear path to go public, uh, and so there'll be opportunities for investors to participate privately and then publicly in the next three to six months. And I think, you know, six months is probably the the timing of when we're going public. Uh, if we're successful in locking up those assets uh, this year, and that's that's what we're working towards. Gotcha. And that's really my next question: is what do you want, or what are you looking for for our viewers and listeners, and for myself? Um, what are you looking for for us? What are you hoping yeah. to find? Yeah, so obviously, you know, we're always looking at new sources of capital, new partners uh, to come in and invest in, in our platform. Uh, the earlier, the better. Uh, you get a, you get a show on a, a vehicle that's going to have at least an asset. We're not a blind shell uh, hoping to buy stuff. We're going to have our first asset. So you're investing in a company that will have one asset owned that's worth a lot more than we're paying for. Uh, you know, having 340 million tons of copper um, and, you know, almost 80 million US spent and we're, not, we're paying, you know, a fraction of that. I think mm -hmm. um, getting new investors in our capital uh, stack is always good to diversify uh, our investor base, uh, new investors who may have never followed our, our, our previous stories. Um, and exposure is always good because you never know what happens. You know, assets might come from this, investors come from this. And of course, we'll have a better following when we're public. The more eyeballs on the story now ahead of the go public, I think whether they're in the story now or to come in later, uh, that's always a good thing. So we're always looking to, to build uh, you know, our investor base and, uh, Absolutely. we've done it before. I think we've shown we can raise capital. We can work in, uh, tougher jurisdictions or perceived jurisdictions. Uh, so it's so very exciting to, to be able to now focus, uh, uh on this vehicle here, whereas I think is more open to, I would say North American investors, if that's where your, you know, most of your audience is based. Yeah, we have, um, so, you know, in all of our, um, our viewers and listeners know we are over 50% here of our viewers and listeners are in the U S uh, yep. About twenty percent are in Canada, so you're looking at about a seventy percent uh, market, if you would, in North America. So, um, so if people, uh, potential investors, are interested in reaching out to you and the project, how do they yep. do with that? Yeah, uh, so we have a website set up, uh, OlympicPreciousMetal.com. Uh, you can, uh, you know, add yourself to the distribution list uh, and reach out there uh, as well. And we can, and I've already had people do so, uh, you know, they've never, never done how to do that at a private company before, but we did it, you know, to build that awareness and people have reached out again with asking when, when, how they can invest and, and also bring us assets. So that's, you know, that's why we did so. So, uh, and my email, of course, is Anil, A-N-E-E-L at olympicpreciousmetals.com. So you can go through our website or email me directly and we're happy to follow up. Excellent. All right. I will put all of that in the show notes uh, below this interview. And then uh, I'd love to have a follow up um, right before news comes out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but I'd love to have a follow up with you maybe yeah. in the next uh, four to eight weeks. Absolutely. All right. All right. Thank you so much, Anil. Uh, thank you for spending time with me today. Thank you, Andy. You bet.